Thank you for bearing with us there for a few minutes. Janine always gets the broken eye. It's always my fault. I know. Sorry. Good evening and welcome to the Township Committee meeting of October 25th, 2022. Ms. Bork, please call the roll. Here. Commissioner Brennan. Here. Commissioner Zalport. Here. Commissioner Thompson. Mayor Erickson? Here. Mayor McConaughey? Here. Administrator Herrera? Here. Attorney Willard? Here. Please join me in salute to the flag. Please be advised that in accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, that notice of this meeting was made by the posting of the bulletin board at the Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex and notifying the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at Hillsborough Township Municipal Complex at 7.30 p.m. on October 25th, 2022. Before we start our normal proceedings, um, I'd like to ask if we could have a moment of silence. Um, as you're aware, we unfortunately had a tragic loss of life of a young man in the with everything to go to live for. His name was Jorge Antonio. Last Thursday, he was tragically uh, died in a car accident not far from here. Um, he had just graduated from Hillsborough High School last year and he was on his way to RVCC for school. We met an unfortunate end in a horrific car accident not far from here. He is one of five children. Um, I ask that we keep his family and friends in our prayers uh, to get through this difficult time. There has been a GoFundMe site started for his, if you wish to help in any way. So I'd like to ask just for a moment of, of silence. Thank you for that. Um, before we get to the improvements, I would like to just welcome someone back to the day who's been missing for a few weeks. Our administrator, Anthony Ferrer, is up here. Welcome back, Anthony. Thank you, Mayor. You've got more Kevlar and stuff <laughs> wrapped on you than, than most hockey players. But Thank thanks, thanks for sucking it up and being with us today. Uh, so our first will be regular minutes uh, approval of September 13th, 2022. May I have a motion? Motion. Oh. Second. Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Brennan? Yes. Commissioner Delcor? Abstain. Deputy Mayor Erickson? Abstain. Yes. Regular meeting minutes of September 27, 2022. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. 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 Roll call, please. Commissioner Brennan? I was not here, so abstain. Commissioner Delcor? Yes. Deputy Mayor Erickson? Yes. Commissioner Yes. All right, we'll move to <laughs> see if you guys are awake. Uh, Community liaison reports, we'll start with Commitment Brady. So first, uh, Mayor, thanks for thanks for starting off the way you did earlier today. Uh, as a father of three boys, um, it cuts deep when you when you hear about the loss of life, of a young life like that. So, um, so thanks for starting off with that. I think it was extremely appropriate, so thank you. Um, and to stick with um, some wonderful things that we've done with children in the township, um, we had a, uh, most recently a a service where we had something called coloring with cops and it's a great opportunity for the kids to sit down with the police officers chief how many how many police officers were there about 15 15 20. it was a lot of police officers and they actually sat down with the children and colored with them and signed them like they were superheroes it was pretty cool so um so that was on thursday october 13th mayor lapani and i spent the afternoon uh, with these young people we called the coloring with cops uh, hillsborough police and dozens of the township children came out to have pizza which was great they gave them pizza and um, some wonderful displays of art. My, my two older boys were there. They were five and six. The one-year-old, you don't want them there. He would cause chaos. Um, as you see the pictures, everybody, everybody had a blast. And it was a really great thing. And hopefully we can continue to do that every quarter or so and bring the children closer to the police department, which is wonderful. So uh, for all those who uh, attended the HBA Networking Social, um, thank you so much for being there. On behalf of the Hillsborough Township Committee, Hillsborough Business Association, and the Economic and Business Development Office, Thank you to all who have attended the who attended the October 18th Hillsborough Business Association Social. 
please save the date for our next networking event, which be, will be held in uh, April 23, the end of April, uh, uh, April 2023. Mayor Lapani kicked off the event, and we were also joined by Deputy Mayor Janine Erickson. I was there as well. And stay tuned for future events. So a lot of great stuff going on with the local businesses in Hillsborough, and you'll see some of that tonight. Um, social services. So Triangle Elementary School, or actually where I went, um, celebrated the week of respect, October 3rd through 7th, with the theme, We Can Show Respect. And that's terrific. Teachers incorporated a top uh, the topic of respect throughout the week with various pride activities, P-R-I-D-E, so, so specific to the acronym, activities to show their triangle values. Pride is the character education program at Triangle Elementary School. Uh, students were encouraged to participate in spirit wear days as pajama day. My, actually, my middle guy did that today at uh, Woods. When students wore pajamas to express the idea, we can put unkind behavior to bed. Uh, having three boys, that's very important, right? <laughs> students and staff at the help of Triangle Community made donations to go to the Community Assistance Network, which is C-A-N or CAN, uh, the food pantry, housed in the Township Social Services Department. Students were excited to participate and have the chance to support those families in need. It's another wonderful thing that we do in town. Um, now we'll go to um, uh, health. Um, there will be a COVID vaccination clinic on Friday, October 8th from 3 to 6 p.m. here at the Municipal Building. For those, again, that's October 8th from 3 to 6 p.m. Oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, it says 8th on there, so 28th. Excuse me. Yep, yep. Sorry about that. That's my bad. October 28th. That would have happened a long time ago. So October, <laughs> October 28th. Uh, we want those that needed to get it. That's an important, important feature. The new, uh, bival uh, the new bivalent COVID booster is available for ages 12 and up, and the flu vaccine is available for, pe uh, for people 5 and up, so also for the flu vaccine. The health department would like, to uh, like you to know that you can get both the flu shot and the COVID booster at the same time. Please see tomorrow's e-news or the, or the Hillsborough Township website for the registration link. Um, that, that's it for me, Mayor, as it relates to the just general, general business. But um, I did want to provide an update from, from last week, and I, uh, I know a lot of you are here to, to understand and talk about and share your concerns about warehouses. I shared my, um, <laughs> my frankly, um, I, I don't want the warehouses in Hillsborough to be here. I completely want to or 20 minutes from 287, 20 minutes from Route 1. What the heck is the point? There's no common sense to that. That's my opinion. So I wanted to, um, I provided here some, some, some uh, a slide to give you uh, a visual as to what we're going to start to look into as a township. I'm going to read off of some of my notes here that I prepared for the meeting, so bear with me. It's about a minute. So as a follow-up from my comments from the last meeting, I would like to share with you some of the additional information and thoughts summarized on a slide that I provided in support. Regarding first, on the, uh, the left-hand side, you see roads, the subject matter we're going to look at. Our township engineer is conducting a study, and we are awaiting the results on the existing infrastructure, speed, turn geometries, and weight restrictions. It will also be important that the compatibility of other modes of transportation, such as walking and biking, are taken into account, along with identifying sensitive receptors in an area such as schools, daycare centers, recreation parks, places of worship, etc. As soon as that information is available, we will be sharing the results with the community. So there's a lot of work that's going into that right now as we speak. In terms of location, so the next one you see location, scale, and architectural standards, um, uh, um, the State of New Jersey Planning Commission, or also known as the Office of Planning Advocacy, recently adopted a distribution slash warehousing and goods movement guidelines. So they gave us specific guidelines to follow, right? Most of you might be read about that on the internet. Over the last several years, it is obviously clear that the term warehouse covers uh, a vast array of uses and types of buildings. It's massive. A couple of years ago, it could have been a building with two trucks, now it could be a distribution center. Right? We have to redefine how we look at this. Um, as such, Hillsborough Township needs to re-examine the definition of warehouses based on this recent guidance from the state. We have to look into it deeply. As we move forward with these changing times and the guidance provided, this is an opportunity for our township to redefine and subsequently reaffirm what is and what is not a warehouse, to start from the beginning. Um, zoning districts should be appropriately scaled to match the type and intensity of land use in surrounding areas to minimize and avoid on and off site impacts. I've asked the planning department in the township uh, to take a deeper look into this recent guidance and provide analysis in the coming weeks. All right, that's another thing that's been actively worked on, just a little bit more here and then I'm done. This will also play into uh, supporting green initiatives to forward thinking, have to be sustainable as, an, as, as, a, as, a, as a township and the way we look at it. So we will add sustainable components to the redefinition. And finally, building on speculation. You can see my face on that one, right? Um, that will be addressed as well. 
So in summary, we will look to redefine what a warehouse is in Hillsborough, along with circulation plans, hours of operation, multimodal infrastructure, and roadways, as well as many other factors. It is essential that in order to protect our community, and I mean that, my three kids are here, I can move here to not protect them, I'm here to protect them. We have a proactive and comprehensive approach to our land use master plan, zoning, and project review procedures based on sound planning practices. And we will continue to update our community as more and new information is available. You can see I have a ton of energy behind this and I will continue to push for this. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple items. Uh, some of you, if you had construction and or renovations done in 2022, you may have received a, it's called an added or omitted tax bill last week. Uh, again, those are our bills that are due for uh, for changes that may have been done to your home uh, since the uh, since the original bills were, were sent out also could be part of farmland adjustments uh, so if you saw those that's what those represent uh, those did go out last week so you should have received them uh, if you haven't and you you're expecting one you can reach out to our our tax office um, the from the clerk's office uh, just a reminder, I know many of you have uh, organizations in town that you, you try to do fundraisers, uh, in many cases, things like 50-50s or raffles. Uh, we would ask that, please, there are guidelines on the township website under the under the clerk's page as to how to go ahead and complete an application. We would expect uh, ask that you do that 30 days in advance, not because we care, want to, want to come down on you for having a 50-50 raffle. We want to make sure that uh, you're staying clear of of, uh, of the regulations making sure that no one's gonna gonna give you grief uh, for for the fundraising activities that you that you're having so just go do the application it's a really simple process do it in advance and this way you can have your events make sure you raise and keep all the money that you do and and no one's going to give you give you problems <coughs> down the road uh, finally I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the upcoming general election for 2022 it's, I, Hope you all know that's going to be held on uh, November the 8th. There are polling locations throughout Somerset County uh, and on the ballot are local offices, county positions, and uh, positions for the 7th and 12th congressional districts. If you're unclear of your polling location for Hillsboro, um, you should have received, uh, the county sent out last week, the sample ballots uh, went out to all registered voters. Uh, it should on the sample ballot should give you an idea of the district you're in and where your polling location should be. Uh, if you don't, if you're not sure, you can reach out to the uh, to the clerk's office and uh, and confirm uh, where you should go to vote on election day. Um, there are also other options in person early voting that will begin on October the 29th and it will last through November the 6th. And uh, early voting will take place here at the municipal building. Uh, between the hours of 10 and 8 p.m. Monday through Saturday and from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday during that early voting period. So there's uh, lots of ways that you can come and vote in person here uh, at the municipal building. If you prefer to uh, to do a mail-in ballot, um, if you are an eligible voter and you have not requested a mail-in ballot, you may participate in the early early voting. If you are voting by mail, the last day to apply for a mail-in ballot is November the 1st. And the last day to apply in person for a mail-in ballot is November the 7th at the Somerset County Clerk's Office in Somerville. So uh, one of the things we're, we're trying to do with New Jersey is make sure that you've got all these opportunities to vote. There's plenty of, of time here available at the municipal building. We've got our staff uh, covering that, so thank you to... Uh, Ms. Bork and her team because they've got uh, a lot of work over the next over the next couple weeks with the with the election. Uh, so we appreciate the work, but uh, it's important. So we hope you come out and uh, and uh, take advantage of the the various voting opportunities that are out there. Again, November eighth is election day, and if you're unsure of where to vote, uh, there's information on the Hillsborough Township website, and that includes the voting district poll locator. So uh, that's it for me, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you guys have to bear with me. I have three pages of notes to read, so I will try and be as quick as possible. So from the building department, um, as a reminder, the building department offers Saturday electrical inspections for residential properties. 
Please contact the building department directly to learn more about how you can schedule a Saturday inspection. Uh, the engineering department would like to inform the public that they are that the repaving of phase two of Amsterdam Drive is being postponed until spring of 2023 due to weather conditions. The repaving project, which will be partially funded by the State, of Depart the State Department of Transportation grant, could not be awarded until the engineering plans and specifications were approved by the NJDOT. The approval took longer than it has in previous years. The township was hoping to repave this year, but the NJDOT has strict repaving standards for temperature of pavement, so the township needs to delay this project. From the Public Works Department, they would like you to know that they will begin, it, it will begin its leaf collection program the first week of November. The program continues through mid-December or until the, there has been a minimum of two passes through the entire town. The, to participate in the leaf collection program, residents are asked to please break their leaves to the curb or street right of way by, by the beginning of their scheduled weeks for collection. Residents are urged to keep leaves away from gutters, drain pipes, and drop inlets so as not to block the free flow of water. Please remove rocks, sticks, brush, and other objects for, from leaf piles as they can cause damage to the collection machinery and delay the program. No attempt will be made to collect leaf piles containing damaging items. Please be sure to check the township website beginning the week of October 31st for updates on the area specific schedule of collections. Um, Coffee with a cop. I know uh, the commissioner, uh, commissioner of town, I mean, used to work, um, uh, Britting explained about the Coffee with the Cops program. It was a huge success. So um, if you want to join the Hillsborough Township Police Officers for Coffee with a Cop, take place, take, I'm sorry, you did with coloring. This is yep. coffee. Kids. Kids, adults, sorry. Um, taking place. You can place, bring your color. Bring your color. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that'll be taking place at Hillsborough Starbucks on Thursday. Um, October 27th from 12 to 2 p.m. That's this Thursday. Coffee with a Cop is a terrific opportunity to meet Hillsborough's finest and ask any questions while enjoying delicious hot or cold beverages. I've been there in the past. It's a great opportunity to have a, get to know our, our cops, like you said. So hopefully you can join them. Um, so police would like to know a little bit about Halloween safety. Chief Michael McMahon in the back. Um, would like to remind residents of the safety precautions for all those participating in Halloween festivities. Here are some suggestions of par to parents of trick-or-treaters. Wear light colored clothing that is short enough to prevent tripping and add reflective tapes to the sides, front and back of the costumes. Make sure children can see well through masks or cosmetics. Apl adults should accompany young children, go out in daylight and carry a flashlight after nightfall. Watch for traffic. Examine all candy before allowing children to eat it. Only give and accept wrapped and packaged candy and keep control of pets. They may react, un react unexpectedly to children in costumes. Um, from the police as well on their Operation Take Back, the Hillsborough Police Department will be hosting Operation Take Back on Saturday, October 29th from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. This is an opportunity for Hillsborough residents to safely, safely dispose of unused or unwanted medications. The service is free and anonymous. Please bring pills only as the program does not accept liquids or sharps. So for all you hockey fans, um, grab your jerseys and bring the family to one of Hillsborough's favorite traditions. Hillsborough Township sports enthusiasts are once again invited to participate in the 8th annual Hillsborough Township Day at the Prudential Center on Saturday, November 26th, as the New Jersey Devils take on the Washington Capitals. I have no clue about anything to do with hockey and I'm sports oriented. I know there's something to do with your favorite and <laughs> usually it's Devils Flyers, I don't know. So, but anyways, it's a great event. So if you can join, please do so. Plus the next 15 people to purchase tickets to our Hillsborough Township night on Saturday, November 26th, will be entered into a raffle to win two free sweet tickets to a Devils game. See tomorrow's e-newsletter for registration link. And last, I mean, from the Municipal Alliance, you may have noticed people picking up trash on the side of the road last Friday. They were part of the Municipal Alliance's Adopt a Highway program. We would like to thank all volunteers who helped to clean our roadways, as well as playing such an important role in drug and al alcohol prevention and education. That is it. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> 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 
All right. Uh, so I've got just a couple of things. So um, this time you would like to give an update of what we've done as far as infrastructure uh, throughout the town. Um, so just give an idea of the scope of work that we've done this year. So um, the roads that we were done in 2022, including Amsterdam Drive between Millstone River Road and Belit Drive, Westcott Road, DeCamp Drive, Sutton Lane, Saxon Street, Thatcher Terrace, Shepherd Court, Bigley Road, Danley Lane, Ernest Road, Eileen Court, and Stryker Lane between Homestead Road and Eileen Court. All the roads were completed, including handicraft ramps, replacements at all intersections. Total cost of the improvements was $1.3 million. Uh, additionally, uneven sidewalks were replaced in the following roadways, Van Bolton Road, Oak Terrace, Buckland Drive, Nimrod Way, Stockton Road, Moore Road, Hewley Lane, Gaffney Court, and Shugle Court. The total cost of these repairs was $75,000. Um, in the parks and recreation, we also saw improvements to the tennis courts at Woodfield Park, so they can now accommodate pickleball. New water fountains installed at Ann Van Middlesworth Park, allowing for both drinking and refilling water bottles. A doggy water fountain was also installed. Additionally, the adult baseball field at Lowe's Field was reactivated. The Department of Public Works reported the following infrastructure repairs for 2022, which including 127 storm drains and approximately 10,000 feet of hot asphalt road patching was completed to date. As always, all projects, all projects were completed, meeting current ADA requirements, such as handicap ramps, provide better access and mobility for our handicap <laughs> residents. The storm watch cat, stormwater catch basins re retrofit meets the new New Jersey DEP requirements and also provides a sustainable component, which the township is a sustainable Jersey silver certified. Um, the second phase of Amsterdam Road uh, will be completed in spring of next year due to the fact that the bid process and the um, timing would not preclude us to getting that road before uh, done before the cold weather sets in. So you'll see that start uh, beginning part of next year. Um, and that was mostly funded by grants um, from the state. Uh, so that will update on that. So a lot of work to be done and a lot of work still to be done. So thank you to all those who uh, made Hillsboro a little more ship shape this year. Uh, also like to thank the Parks Department for sprucing up the wooden park here at the Municipal Complex. Um, the recent paint job is colorful, inviting, appealing to the kids of all ages. Over across the way, we remember the, the I'll call it old kids we call jungle gyms, but well, I guess that's old. Um, that's now, uh, yeah. Uh, last Sunday, I had the mayor's walk. Uh, I had about 20 residents join myself, and his work was there uh, to have a stroll through Historic Dukes Park and just have a light conversation about what was on their mind. It's always a great time to have just a casual uh, conversation with our residents and also take in the beauty of Duke Island Park. And if you haven't been there, uh, especially to the orchid garden in the back, it's uh, it's a trip you got to take. It's like being in Costa Rica walk in there and some of the beautiful flowers. Uh, as a reminder, we're all, you're all invited to join us on Friday, November 11th at 6 p.m. at the Garden of Honor for our annual Veterans Day ceremony. And also uh, continuing to remind the Rotary Club of Hillsboro is once again organizing the Flags for Heroes Field of Honor, which will be right opposite that garden in the front of the building here for any veterans that you may want to honor with a flag. This flag is a $50 donation, which will include a veteran's name and a short message for the, from the sponsor. The flags will be in position in the municipal complex from November 5th through the 19th. And again, those wishing you can go to the, uh, look for the Hillsboro e-news for the website, uh, and you can go on there and, and purchase a flag. Uh, Friendly reminder, uh, Hillsborough Township provides a public service reminder that A, tampering, i.e. stealing or vandalizing any political sign is a violation of, of other people's freedom of speech. Citizens also need to know that according to the law, those who tamper with political signs can be charged with theft, criminal mischief, and or trespassing. Simply put, people, no one should touch a sign. I know they're all there. They'll be gone in a couple weeks. If you believe a political sign is illegally placed, please contact the Hillsborough Township zoning official, Ms. Marcy McLaughlin, at 369-8382, and she will determine if the sign needs to be removed. Please don't take it down yourself. 
And if you came in and saw or had a chance out here, the Scarecrow Festival uh, kicked off our second year, and it was a banner year for Scarecrows. Um, it was great to see them all, and I'm here to announce our winners, as voted by you. In first place is A Minion Yummy Recipes by Stephanie ne Nemius of Healthy Home LLC. In second place, The Grinch Who Stole Halloween by the Schaffer Family. In third place, we have Pete the Cat by the Goddard School of Hillsboro. And fourth place winner is DJ Echo and Gang Green by the Newman family. Congratulations to all, and thank you to all the Hillsboro residents and visitors for making our Scarecrow Festival a success. And thank you to all the creative groups and individuals, individuals and township employees, I'll add, who create fun and festival, festive crows to share with the community. There's still some time to see the scarecrows. They will be on display until Saturday, September 29th. As always, you can stay October 29th. Well, it could be September 29th, 2023. If they really be scared, we'll change October 29th. You guys are paying attention. That was a test, thank you. As always, you can stay connected with all events more via the Wednesday, Wednesday news, newsletter and follow and like the official Hillsborough Township Facebook page and Twitter, TV29, and the Hillsborough YouTube channels, and the Hillsborough Alerts for traffic and emergency notifications. We have a few proclamations and presentations to do today, so I will go down and start for the first one. Take that. Testing. Small. Okay, so we have uh, our veteran small business week. Is that what's first? Somebody coming up from there. There they are. <laughs> well, I'm sure for our small business presentations. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Somebody get waved what from here. Yeah, there's two. Veterans, small business owned. Sorry. Two veterans, small business owners. All right. Can we see it? They're all high. No? So, President Obama first declared National Veterans Small Business Week in 2014 to recognize the vital role of veterans and their spouses play in our economy. Veteran-owned businesses are a critical pillar in the United States economy. The, through entrepreneurship and business ownership, the veteran can, veterans continue their service by not only contributing to the economy, but also creating economic opportunities for other Americans. The Office of the Economic and Business Development Sustainable Acts as a catalyst for the Economic and Business Development Commission's mission to encourage development by attracting, retaining, and assisting businesses to expand and grow in the township. This week on October 31st through November 5th is recognized to shine a light on and continue to raise awareness and encourage support of veteran-owned businesses. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that we, the mayor and the Hillsborough Township Committee, do hereby proclaim October 31st through November 5th as National Veteran Small Business Week and celebrate the rich contributions made by Hillsborough Township's veteran-owned businesses while acknowledging the growth and accomplishments of veteran entrepreneurs and the vital roles they play in our country. So we have women-owned businesses. Do we have some of our women? Oh, there we go. We need to have at least one. Yeah. Two, oh, three, three, four. Come on up. Okay. 
The National Women Business Council established in Women's Small Business Month to celebrate the growth and accomplishments of female entrepreneurs, recognize the vital role they play in our economy, and the spotlight, spotlight successful women, business owners who have been the trailblazers for future generations of women. The Economic and Business Development Commission, the EDBC, is comp composed of volunteers from the community appointed by the Township Committee who act as liaisons between the business community and Township officials. The Office of the Economic and Business Development and Sustainability acts as a catalyst for the Economic and Business Development Commission's mission uh, development and attracting, retaining, I'll just yell. Now, therefore, be proclaimed that we, the mayor of the Celebrate the rich contributions made by Hillsborough Township women owned businesses while acknowledging the growth and accomplishments of all female entrepreneurs and the vital roles they play in the economy. So I'm going to ask the women. Take one of these. I'm having some technical difficulties today. I feel like I feel like I'm Bob <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> All right. Come on. Hello. All right. There you go. All right. All right. Our camera is over on the side, and uh, so I'm going to ask the, the, our entrepreneurs to introduce their names and name sentences. Hi, I'm Arva Sura, and I own a business in town called Insta Crystal, and we do custom crystal awards, trophies, and gifts. How long have you been? Uh, we started February 2019, just before everything shut down. Good for you. Hi, I'm Tina Rear. I own Scrap You and Artistry Two. We're a full service art studio in town. We've been in business a little over eight years. Hi. Um, I'm Marissa Narula, and I own Code Ninjas in Hillsborough. We've been open since <laughs> since June of 2019, and we teach kids coding and robotics. Hi, I'm Ada Young, the Little Gym. Uh, we've been open since September 2016, and we are a recreational gymnastics and enrichment center for children from 0 to 12 years old. Hi, Janet Keaton. <laughs> okay, is that better? Janet Kiva with Right at Home. So we help families that are challenged by the care needs of their elderly loved ones in Somerset and Hunterdon counties. And this is our 15th year in business. Hi, I'm Barbara Kelly. I am the owner of Rocksteady Boxing. And we offer boxing inspired fitness classes for people with Parkinson's. And we've been in business now in Hillsborough since 2017. Well, a round of applause for these This may be going out, so we'll try one more time. Um, last is um, Red Ribbon Week. Red Ribbon Week. Ribbon. on that while you do that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Back. <laughs> New Jersey has the sixth highest rate of fatal youth drug overdoses in the country due to inexpensive and highly pure heroin in New Jersey. 15% of New Jersey teens admit to drinking alcohol for the first time before the age of 13. 39% of New Jersey teen, teens admit this is just admit, not the truth, right? <laughs> just smoking marijuana at least once daily. The National Family Partnership for Drug-Free Youth, the Hillsborough School District, and the Hillsborough Municipal Alliance are sponsoring a National Red Ribbon Campaign, which will be celebrated on October 23rd to the 31st, offering citizens the opportunity to demonstrate their commitment to drug-free lifestyles. Now, therefore, be proclaimed that we, the mayor and the township committee, do hereby recognize October 23rd to the 31st, 2022, as a resident week, and encourage the citizens of Hillsborough Township to participate in drug prevention activities, making a visible statement that we are strongly committed to a drug free community, and further encourage all citizens to pledge, celebrate life, live drug free. Yeah, that's a lot. Thank you, Mayor and Township Committee, as always, for your support of Red Ribbon Week. It's so important that we take time out to celebrate this week. This is our campaign this year, Celebrate Life, Live Drug Free. Based on the statistics that you just read, we know that drug addiction and alcohol abuse is a problem in our community and a problem in our state. And the more that we can raise awareness about it, the more we can help our community. So as always, we appreciate. Um, we have a lot of activities going on in the school district this week. We also have some community activities going on to raise awareness. One of the activities we have going on is a poster contest that anybody can get involved with. So if you feel like getting a little creative, create a poster with this theme. It's open to anybody, elementary school, middle school, high school, and adults. There's an adult category as well. So um, there's prizes available. So more information in the mayor's e-news this week will be going out about the poster contest. So get involved. We need to be a community that cares about our citizens and we need to reduce stigma about drug addiction and alcohol abuse. We need to care about our community members. We know that people are struggling and you know we need to talk about it and raise awareness about it. So thank you as always for your dedication to this cause. Thank you, Mindy. Got some swag. Yeah, it's got nice. some candy. All right. Tough time here. It's good to be you right now. No, 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 no. They have enough candy now. All right, so we have uh, some presentations to make. So I'd like to invite Maria Volio up as chair of the Credit Card Advisory Committee. So if you don't know who this young lady is, this is Maria Volio. She's the chair of the Credit Card Advisor Commission for like ever. <laughs> How many years now? I don't know. Maybe about, <laughs> maybe about 20. 20. Over the years, we've given over probably about $95,000 to our seniors and the youth of the community. And this year, this uh, year we're giving out, or this term, we're giving out $4,300 to four different grants. We sit as a committee, make recommendations to the township. We go through the grants, we look at the validity, and we see who they serve, and it's serving the community. Uh, so let's give out the first one. They're sitting here in the front row. Come on up, ladies. And gentlemen, is he here? If you don't know who these ladies are, 
They're the Rockettes. And the Rocket Rockers, but Tony's not here today. So oh, okay. Rockettes <laughs> and and Rory, would you like to say a few words? I want to thank the credit card committee and I want to thank Hillsborough Township and I want to thank my Rockettes. They do a wonderful job. I just want to tell you that um, the Rockettes are performing between November and December, five of the nursing homes here in Hillsborough. And I do want to introduce three new dancers within the last couple of weeks. Uh, how about uh, Diane? Okay. My name's Diane Glass, and I'm happy to be part of this wonderful group. They're very energetic and uh, very entertaining. <laughs> Karen. Karen. Hi, everybody. My name is Karen Carrier, and uh, I've been living in Hillsborough 40 years, and I'm retired from uh, Hillsborough Library. And uh, I joined this group uh, about March this year. So beautiful and so nice. I'm thanks to Robin introduced me that group. And I like to thank Gloria. She's a beautiful person and uh, she giving me endless love and patience. And uh, I'm so happy to join this group. And I have feeling my senior years be so good. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever she said. Barbara <laughs> Masterbone. I love to dance. Wonderful group. Thank you very much. Okay. So we have how much are we giving them? Seven hundred. All right. Hold, hold the check. <laughs> oh, it's all right. <laughs> No, it's everybody. It's everybody. It's, it's everybody on there. Okay, never mind. Uh, but next. For baseball equipment, let's have the Raiders Diamond Club. Raiders Diamond Club. Only two. That's easier. So why don't you tell us what you're going to use the uh, box for? I'll be the spokesperson. So my name is Matt Mosco. I'm the head varsity baseball coach at Hillsborough High School. Um, this was uh, brought to our attention a few weeks ago, and we decided to apply for it. We're going to utilize the um, funds for various equipment items that our boys fundraise for, and sometimes the school district is unable to provide for us um, to further our program and continue to have baseball be a pride of our, our township. Okay, next, the Boy Scouts. Boy Scouts.
Hello, my name is Joseph Angelo, and I am Senior Patrol Leader of Troop 89. Um, we're receiving a grant to uh, buy more camping equipment for our troop. I just mentioned that uh, Troop 89 is the oldest troop in Hillsboro. We were chartered in 1958. Our sponsor is the fire department on Route 206. If you uh, know of any young men who are interested in the scouting program, you can find us online. Thank you. Now, I hope you understand Boy Scouts, they year round, they camp. Uh, I was involved with Girl Scouts, and by the time they were that age, the girls just made reservations. They didn't camp anymore. <laughs> so that's something. Even in the winter, they go. Uh, the next one and the last one is the Project Graduation. Most of us probably are familiar with Project Graduation if we've had any of our children through the high school. And you want to explain what Project Graduation is? funds so that they can buy some t-shirts so you can be recognized and you'll pass them down year to year. Yes. Hello. If you don't know, Project Graduation I have to read it, is a volunteer committee of parents and community partners who come together each year to, sell, to create a fun, safe, and drug-free alcohol graduation night celebration for our seniors. We raise, we usually have to raise about $40,000, $50,000 during the year. Um, it was started 25 years ago by this lady to my left, Sally Trion, and another guy, Arnie Diamond. Um, now, luckily, last year, we were able to help Resolution Run because, um, the, uh, let's see, Gary, Gary, the gentleman who is in, uh, has ALS, and so he could not do it anymore. So we got with them, and now we could be a 501c3. So we were always the, one of the biggest um, recipients of Resolution Run's uh, grants and stuff. So we are going to use these shirts. Uh, we're buying nice shirts so we can reuse them every year. We can use them for our fundraisers to to uh, publicize, pu publicize Project Graduation and also for the night of Project Graduation. And then we'd like to also boombox a PA system because <laughs> when we're trying to give our prizes at Project Graduation, we can't use the dodgeball tournament. We're going to have a spike ball tournament. So um, we have a clothing drive coming up this Saturday at HES if you have any clothes bags <laughs> to give. Um, anyway, so that's, thank you so much. <laughs> That's all. Uh, so we're going to take a, about a five-minute break for those who want to go home, and we'll start the meeting back up in about five minutes.
Uh, obviously, that concludes the proclamations and presentations. Thank you to all those. Congratulations to all those who got uh, grants. Uh, there's no new business at time, so we'll move to public comment on new business and matters not on the agenda. So that basically means if, if it's on today's agenda, this is not the time to talk about it. If it's out, anything outside this agenda, that's today you have the opportunity to make comment. Ms. Borg, please read the uh, statement regarding public comment. The Township Committee welcomes input from the public. Please state your name and address, and please spell your name for the record. You will be given one three-minute three minute allotment for your comments. Please understand that this public forum is not structured as a question and answer session. Comments are to be addressed to the mayor. Again, please keep your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start on this side of the building. If someone stand up, we'll let them come up first, and then we'll finish the left side, and then we'll move to the right side. Good evening. John Ciccarelli, C-I-C-C-A-R-E-L-L-I. -L -L -I. Address. 14 Southland Drive in Hillsborough. Uh, I'm a member of the uh, planning board and I'm happy that the township committee took to heart the uh, planning board's motion that was passed at the September 22nd planning board meeting, which requested that the township re-examine certain elements of the um, zoning ordinances and specifically the definition of warehouses uh, according to Hillsborough. Um, so after that meeting, uh, Committeeman Britting and I discussed uh, the details and necessities of the planning board's motion, and I think we all saw the results in the plan that was put forth tonight by uh, Committeeman Britting. Um, so we look forward to reviewing the additional details uh, and working to implement the plan that's being developed by the Township Planning uh, Department, as well as the Township Committee. Um, as part of the process to update and revise the uh, zoning ordinances. So thank you. Okay, anyone else on the on this side of the building? Okay, well, oh, Maria. Maria Janusik, 720 East Freck Avenue, Manville, New Jersey. I'm also a Hillsborough Township property owner, Block 86, Lot 3, 2155 Camp Lane Road. Um, I have a question in regard to the uh, Western Landfill, because there is an application to the planning board by uh, Western Road LLC, and they're looking to build a warehouse on that property. What I wanted to find out is, is that the Western Landfill a part of that, that parcel of land? Because I know that the, I know that the Weston landfill had been uh, there was there was I think uh, bids out uh, if someone wanted to buy it, and at one of the meetings I had asked if that that uh, landfill was sold, and the answer was no. So I wanted and to that's find still out. correct though. No. So I no. wanted to find out is that is that landfill no. a part of this? Uh, a, because because there is a um, there is a settlement no again. agreement. Is a settlement agreement between the Township of Hillsborough and the owners, um, Westella Family Associates, and that had been in regard to this landfill uh, that was part of that property. And then, and then when the owners found out that it was uh, a landfill that was contaminated or whatever, and there was a lawsuit, and Hillsborough took back that property. So, is this landfill still no. part of that? And property? still, the answer is no. still no. So, so no, the, this, this correct. No. So, no. so, uh, what's going on then with that property since township owns since it? The, to me? Township owns it. The township owns it. The township owns a portion of property over there. I believe it's. I forget the acreage. I, I don't know if it's five acres. I think um, it's even about five, three or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, we do own a few acres over there. And <coughs> the, the the property, the landfill that's owned by Hillsborough. Where is that in relation to that property? Is it is it off to the side where it won't be affected by the warehouse? I think it's in the back by the railroad tracks, but I'm not sure, Mr. Janice, yeah, but I think know. that's where it is. Yeah, Mr. I mean, we can point that to you on a map. It's kind of hard Frank. to explain to you where it is, you know, saying where it is on the property without showing. So if, if you would like to know where it is, we can come on into the planning office. We'll show you where it is on the map. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else on the left side of the room? My left, sorry. You're right. Okay, we'll move over to my right, your left. Anyone? Come on up. 
State your name and address, and Ms. Bork will start the clock after you hit your name. <laughs> Jim Vonderhorst, uh, B as in Victor, O and as in Nancy, D as in David, E R H O R S T as in Tom. I've been doing that all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Not so hard. Not so hard. Oh, you would, you would imagine how it's uh, manipulated sometimes. Well, they made the first name easy, Jim. Uh, 88 Weber Avenue, Hillsboro, New Jersey. And good evening. Uh, I'm president of the uh, Hearthstone at Hillsboro Homeowners Association. And I'm here tonight to ask for your support. Uh, your support to help us defeat the Western Road Warehouse that's proposed to be built directly across the road from our residential community. I'll get to why we're against it in just a second, but first let me just explain who we are. But I like to put faces with names. Uh, Hearthstone at Hillsborough is a community of 185 families, um, active adult families, by the way, over 55. We range in age from 55 to 90. Our median age is around 72. Half of us are retired on fixed incomes. The other half will be there within a few years. <laughs> but I'd like you just to look at the faces in this room, because most of these folks are Hearthstone residents. Um, we're parents, we're grandparents, uh, in some cases, great-grandparents. Um, those, those faces could very easily be your parents or your grandparents. And maybe one of these, maybe one of these days, one of you folks will be in our community. So what's my point? My point is, is that we are the senior citizens of Hillsboro who uh, the township has protected over the years and you have supported us and we need your support in the future as well. So why are we against this warehouse? Last week I sent an email to everybody uh, detailing some of our concerns. So I won't get into all the details right now. We had a great meeting with the um, environmental commission last night uh, to uh, give some additional concerns and we'll do the same thing at the planning board meeting but allow me just to give a sort of a high level view our, our concerns are in four buckets first of all flood with hurricane Ida we had over 25 of our homes had flood damage our detention basin at the front of our property almost crested if it had crested we would have had an additional 15 to 20 homes flooded out. And this detention basin, by the way, is the same detention basin that the developers proposing their overflow to go into on our property. So it's a recipe for uh, disaster. disaster. Uh, safety. Western Road, which is the road we're on as well as the new development, and the surrounding feeder roads, so you've got Sunny Mead, Camp Lane, Falcon, Hamilton, Willow. These are all extremely narrow roads. You're probably familiar with um, They have limited line of sight, many ditches. You've got hairpin turns. Um, so we're, we're saying it's an accident get, getting ready to happen. The third bucket, environmental issues. The proposed plan will eliminate trees directly across from two of our four condominium units, changing their view from what's a pretty nice mature forest view to a warehouse front. Um, also, the deforestation of an additional 8.5 acres is going to destroy a natural sound barrier that covers our entire development. Um, it's the sound barrier that we get that protects us from the train and the airport properties that are directly behind the proposed warehouse. And finally, the traffic. At full capacity, we're not sure what that is because it's on spec, but at full capacity, a warehouse with 28 tractor trailer bays and over 135 parking spaces for other vehicles operating 24-7, that's going to have a negative impact. And by the way, the developer's existing study says there will be no impact on the traffic. It's hard to believe. So in conclusion, you know, we love Hillsboro. We love the development that we're in. For most of us, this is our, uh, for most of us in the community, this is our forever home. 
We have neither desire, and in most cases, not the resources to get up and move out if we don't like what's happening in the development. We fully understand and support the need for the township to increase revenues via new development. But we're asking not this development and not in this area. It doesn't make any sense. It's built a quality of life for our residents in the surrounding Hillsborough community. Um, will be negatively impacted, and of course our homes devalued. We recognize that not approving this proposal means less tax revenue for the township. Um, please consider that sometimes increased revenue is not the best way to measure quality of life nor, de or nor demonstrate government success. Thank you for listening. Uh, anyone else from the side? Okay. Hi, Joyce. Good evening. Can you hear me with this uh, microphone? Yep, you're good. All right. My name is Joyce Eldridge Howard. I live at 75 Weber Avenue in Hillsboro. E L D R I D G E hyphen. Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D. I would like to talk to you about the proposed 140-foot warehouse on Weston Road. I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I started thinking about our neighbors who own homes and condos and townhouses at the Hearthstone at Hillsboro. I bought my townhouse in 2007, 15 years ago. So those who were 55 are now 70, and those who were 65 are now 80, are now 80. So you get my drift. Most of us own homes in North and South Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and some of my neighbors, because they wanted to be near their children and grandchildren, of course, many moved to their home houses in Hillsboro to our, from their houses in Hillsboro to our community. We have a lovely community, quiet, secluded. Everyone is on the most part quite close and friendly. We have many new uh, owners now, and they bought homes for this, probably for the same reasons we bought these homes. They're lovely. The community is lovely. So when we heard about what's going on, of course, we are quite upset. I want to focus tonight on the condominiums on Waterman, because they will be affected on a daily basis. Some of the residents who chose to buy a condominium on Waterman bought not only because the units were beautiful, they liked the quiet environment and the view of the trees and serenity. Now many of the resi residents living in the condo on Waterman are now aging and they spend their quiet time during the spring and summer months on their terraces sitting on the benches, talking with their neighbors, walking the community for those who can, because many have walkers. No one had ever envisioned that our peaceful community would be interrupted by the noise of the trucks, of trucks, the lights shining in their bedrooms. I'm talking about the warehouse, the pollution and the traffic on Western Road. That's why it's called a road not a highway or a thoroughfare. I would like to leave you with this thought. If you are fortunate to still have your parents or if they are still with you or not, would you want their view out of their window to be a 140 foot warehouse with numerous loading docks and trailers and cars with an equal amount of parking spaces? Would you say it's okay if their illnesses worsen because of the bad air from the cars and traffic, 
Would you want them to have to be relegated inside, relocated or relegated in their homes because of the outside environment caused by poor planning by the powers that be? Would you? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen in the back. <clears throat> the name is Rich Schaefer, 31 Thornton Street in Hillsboro. First, I want to thank uh, Robert Redding. Is that correct? That's right. Thanks, Thanks for your support. I appreciate it with the warehouses. <laughs> and I just want to throw out a couple of uh, bullet type of things. They were talking about yesterday a possibility of at least 500 plus a uh, thousand additional gallons of runoff coming off the property. Uh, if we had another Hurricane Ida type storm. Now we had what, 25, 35 homes that were damaged. Another 500,000 would probably set us maybe at 50 to 75 at least homes that are damaged from the flooding. Uh, another thing is uh, I think it was before the pandemic, maybe shortly after, where these little pellets were put down on the, on this road, western and whatnot, and the cars were going to run over it, flatten it down, so that it smoothed out the road, and it uh, repaired some of the holes and things like that. Okay, I can't see how a 50, 60,000 pound tractor trailer is going to ride on those roads and not tear it up. And we, the taxpayer, are going to wind up having to pay more taxes to improve the roads. And, and if you ever see these tractor trailers trying to turn from Sunnymead onto Western, they go over concrete, they go over hedges, they have to back up to, to, to make a complete turn. And, and there's, you know, I don't know how many people, how many senior citizens are going to wind up in the hospital or even worse because of this traffic we're going to have here. Um, another thing uh, was, again, the pollution. You know, they're talking about three trucks in the morning, seven in the afternoon, and whatnot. Why would they have 139 parking spots, 28 places to unload their trailers, 20 bays for three trucks in the morning? You know, and if you read up, it says it's going to be only open for, for seven hours or 10 hours in a day. They got entire staff working in a, in a building, 5,000 square feet, just dedicated for the staff. So, you know, you have to look into that. Also, 10 years ago, from what I understand, that property, um, they were looking to put townhouses on or some type of homes that was subdivided, and it was turned down because that land was contaminated. And you know, and they, got, and they brought up last night what the contamination was. It was arsenic, it was lead, it was all these things. Maybe it doesn't affect the, the uh, what they want to put in as industrial, but it's still in there, and it's going to be in a runoff water that goes into our complex. And, and there's many, many other things, and you'll see all the comments when you get from, from the board that we met with last night. Okay. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> Richard Cousy, C O U C Z I, and it's one steel place. Everyone did such a good job. By the way, thank you very much. But everyone does. Did such a good job, I have nothing to say. Only one thing the 500,000 gallons of water, and they explained if there's another storm like Ida, it will be six or seven hours. It will be 500,000 gallons. That's 66,000, I believe, 846 cubic feet of water, which would cover an acre and a quarter by one foot. And according to Jim's point, that would overflow our basin. 
And I have no idea. I'm not an engineer. I'm not an attorney. I can't understand how they would be allowed to drop water into our catch basin. It fills up on the storm. So again, there's many things. There's aesthetics. There's property value. There's the likes. There's the people living in the condos. But the, the bottom line is, you know, where is the quality of life? We live in a residential area. Now, unfortunately, next to a commercial piece of property, but the traffic, the roads, the pollution. Uh, one more thing, you don't know who to. Well, they don't. They say they don't know who the tenant is. I don't know if that's true. It doesn't matter. But I work for a company. We own 600 trucks. If those over the uh, road guys come and it's operating even 12 or 14 hours a day, they're not going to shut their truck off in the winter. They're going to make it run until the guy opens up the doors at six o'clock or the gates. Or if it's a refrigeration area uh, truck, they're not going to shut it off because stuff. Again, we don't know who, who the tenant is, but we would just like your consideration. I'm worried about flooding. Thirty houses flooded. My house flooded. Minute third, that guy. Here's the thing. So everyone understands. It's not water that came into the streets. The storm drains filled up because of the volume of water. And the storm drains, what do they do? When there's no room left, they went into the individual houses through the sump pumps. That's exactly what happened. So 30 people, some of them had two feet of water. If you drop 500,000 gallons into that catch basin, there's going to be 60 people who are going to flood. So again, your consideration when it comes to you, it might be a while, would be considered. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on this side? Oh, okay. Hello, Mr. Mayor, Township Committee. My name is Kathy Brader, B R A D E R, 55 Weber Avenue. Thank you for listening to all of us tonight. Last night, none of you were there, but there was an environmental committee was an unprecedented amount number of people who attended. Over 100 residents from Hearthstone attended that meeting last night. They didn't even know how to handle it. But we weren't there to listen to Mike Ford tell us about his rendering and the little trees he was gonna, the five trees he was gonna put in front of that new 140 thousand square foot warehouse. We are there last night, not to listen to what he had to say. We were there to protest all of us. 100% of us were there to protest the fact that this may happen to destroy our community and the quality of our lives. If you have children, do you? Children, okay. Weston is a residential area. To my surprise, there are so many children along Weston Road, right next to where this proposed townhouse or uh, warehouse is supposed to go. Your most vulnerable population, the children and your seniors are being affected by this. We're begging you to please deny. Please. Thank you. Anyone else on this side? Okay. So uh, <clears throat> thank you for your comments. Um, we're going to move on to the introduction of this, which there are none. So we're going right to the consent agenda. We have consent agenda numbers one through 15. Anyone wishing to take any of these resolutions separately? No. Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as is? So moved. Thank you. We have a second. Second. Any comments from the dais on 1 through 15? <laughs> Seeing none. All right. Any comments from the floor just on the consent agenda numbers 1 through 15 as in the program? Maria Janusik, 720 East Freck Avenue, Manville, New Jersey. Um, regarding consent, consent number two. Resolution authorizing the health officer to hire part-time staff 
to support the strengthening public health grant requirements. Um, who is the borough's health officer? Siobhan Spano. Siobhan Spano. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And what will the um, new staff member, Amado Pacheco, uh, the position of infectious disease prevention coordinator, coordinator uh, what, was, what will his uh, uh, job entail? Don't hurt your foot. I just don't want to hit my foot. Um, so the person that was uh, performing the job, this is for a grant under uh, Siobhan, that person had left, so they are replacing this person. As far as the specifics of that grant and what that, that person is going to do, I don't know the specific job description. Again, this is fully funded by a grant, uh, I believe part of our uh, vulnerable population. Um, so that is fully funded by a grant and that's part of uh, Siobhan's extended staff as part of the, uh, the grant that the township has. You're saying- 10, hour, 10, hours, 10 hours a week. week. Excuse me? It's 10 hours a week. Right, it's $62 per hour. Right. Um, uh, Mr. Pacheco is uh, replacing someone you said, Mr. That, Burr? Yeah, it's correct. Yeah, so I was advised that the person had left prior to that. And as uh, Committee Mandel Court said, it's, I believe it's 10 hours a week. And uh, and the previous person was getting paid the same amount of money? I believe so. I'm not 100% positive. <clears throat> okay. Um, consent number one, resolution authorizing the hiring of Nadine Carr as a part-time registrar to support the Township Health Department. Uh, and it says here there exists a need for a part-time registrar uh, due to a long-term absence of the registrar. Who, who was the registrar? Yeah, so that's obviously a, a HIPAA violation. So we do have an employee that was, is out on medical leave right now. Uh, so that position will be backfilled uh, for this person part-time for probably about six weeks. So this is just temporary until the- absolutely, Yes, absolutely. Only, only as an ad needed basis as well. Okay, all right. Consent number five, resolution authorizing shared services agreement for a shared municipal court between the Township of Hillsborough and the Township of Montgomery. Uh, there has been a shared service agreement already for, for a number of years between um, Hillsborough and Montgomery. Mm -hmm. um, so this renewal. resolution not state that it's a renewal? It's, an, it's, it's a continuation of an existing agreement, but it's a new agreement because the old contract ended and we negotiated a new contract. So it's not it's not a straight renewal. It's, it's not an extension. It's, yeah, all, it's, it's a new contract. It's a new contract. Okay, because I, I believe, in the, well, in the fourth paragraph, it says, whereas the township now wish to renew the shared service agreement. So that's why I'm asking why it doesn't say renew on top. Uh, as Are you really entire. worried about whether it says renew in there or not? I mean, Ms. Jasso, uh, come on. Can, yes. Can, can, we, can we have some meaningful discussion about ordinances here? Because recently you had a resolution for a shared service agreement uh, for a shared municipal court between the Township of Hillsborough and the Township of Branchburg, and that was a new agreement. So that's why I'm questioning why this is why this this appears to be also a new agreement, and and it's and it's not. And actually, the resolution for the Branchburg uh, shared services there were two resolutions. Uh, again, um, why were there two resolutions for a shared service? Uh, agreement for municipal court. Why were there two, two resolutions? Ms. Janicek, for your information also, all those have to be approved by the vicinage before we even get a chance to approve it. So it goes to a third party to prove everything in, in writing. So it's it's really just the same thing we've been doing. So this so this this shared shared service agreement between Hillsborough and Montgomery is going to have to be it was already that's why we're allowed to do it. So it doesn't have to be approved again. It, it, it was, was. It was approved, which has allowed us to go move, move forward. Okay. Well, that's why. That's why I'm saying it's a renewal. It's not a new shared. Uh, hold on. So, so we don't confuse everybody from the general public. Uh, by the way, we uh, have a shared municipal court uh, to save costs. Therefore, we have an agreement with Montgomery. We also service Manville. We also service Branchburg. The agreement with Montgomery has been going very well over the years, and now we're going to renew it for the third time. Uh, so this is a new agreement for another, uh, what, three to five year period. Yeah, five, five years. Five. 
it is. So they essentially is. pay us to use yes. the area. Yes. We make money. Yes. It's good. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on consent agendas? Yes. You, you came out, you know, you got to do something. Susan Gulliford, Hunt Club Road. Um, I have a question on number 10, animal control services. Um, I see that we've got a resolution authorizing the solicitation of bids because our current contract runs out at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and I also unfortunately read today that St. Hubert's is not going to be doing animal control services anymore because they're taking a loss on, on the business. So I'm just wondering if there's some way, as the R RFPs are written up, that they can um, tighten the requirements or oversight or have additional reports that are reviewed. I know we had a problem last year that the health department called me about it, and they spoke with our current animal control service. Um, I don't know if there's any way it can be written in that instead of having an animal control service, that subs out a lot of their, like, they're an office, but they don't have a place for animals to stay. They don't have any kind of medical facilities for the animals. They had people going out that didn't have chip readers. I don't know if there's some way this can be written into the RFP for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on consent agendas? Okay. Good evening, Desi Mandelli from 16 Weber Avenue. Very quick, this is a nice sign outside. One of the Money's Magazine, 100 Best Place to Live, Hillsborough. Do you have a question on the, on the consent no agenda? question, I would love this to be true. For the well, rest of that's, you, as long okay, as you here, so. thank you. All right, anyone else have questions on the consent agenda? And the consent agenda only. <laughs> okay. Seeing none, we have, a, we have a motion and a second. We have a roll call, please. Raymond Brooding? Yes. Raymond Delcor? Yes. Debbie Mary Johnson? Yes. Mary Lapani? Yes. All right, claims list 2022-17. My motion to approve claims list 2022-17. So moved. We have a second? Second. Uh, any comments from the dais? <clears throat> any comments from the floor on the claims list? Okay, come on up. <coughs> Excuse me. Maria Janusik. Thank you. Um, on the supplemental supplemental checklist, um, it seems that uh, every time there's a payment made to um, Robin Glamis or Eleanor Kromeyer, these are these are payments made by grant. Why are those payments always on a supplemental list? You can contact the CFO uh, and ask her. I'm not sure I understand your question. Well, because this, these are normal payments. Supplemental is something that kind of comes up in between. I think you've asked this question before, and if I recall, and again, Ms. Silva, can, can, because it's a grant, it goes outside that as a supplemental. No, but you, no. no. It has to do with the timing of when they submitted their, their, um, their like time sheet, if Voucher? you will. Yeah, so they have to submit something. So in an effort to, you know, be able to pay these individuals in a timely fashion, it ends up being a supplemental. Because um, so there's an approval process for every time, you know, a, a, an invoice from them comes in. So it has to go to the health officer, then it goes to the CFO, then it mm -hmm. comes to me, then it goes back to the CFO, then it goes on a list. So sometimes with all those approvals it doesn't get on the regular claims list so it has to be on the supplemental one and it's just an effort to try to be timely in paying these individuals for their work that they're doing okay, so so there's no schedule as to when they have to provide submit those those vouchers so that it could be paid on a, or 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 is this or are the is it always on the supplemental list being that it's a grant no i can't answer if there um there is no schedule that's the first answer to the first question um and it is i can't answer the question if it's always on the supplement i think it just has to do with the timing timing okay all right thank you thank you anyone else we have a motion second roll call please Commander Britting. yes Commander Zalcor. 
Yes. Deputy Mayor Erickson. Yes. Mayor Lapani. Yes. Uh, that concludes our regular meeting. I'll now entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Thank you. Second. 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 All right. Uh, roll call. Mayor Gooding. Yes. Mayor Delcor. Yes. Deputy Mayor Erickson. Yes. Mayor Lapani. Yes. Have a happy Halloween, everyone, and we'll see you in a few weeks. Please note the next meeting is Wednesday, November 9th. November 9th. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. no. But it's, not, it's a placeholder. There's no executive session. So we have an adjournment. We are adjourned. 9 10.